Battle of Wake Island, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Battle of Wake Island began simultaneously with the attack on Pearl Harbor, and ended on the 23rd of December, 1941, with the surrender of the American forces to the Empire of Japan. It was fought on and around the atoll formed by Wake Island and its islets of Peel and Wilkes, islands by the air, land, and naval forces of the Empire of Japan against those of the U.S., with Marines playing a prominent role on both sides. The island was held by the Japanese for the duration of the Pacific War. The remaining Japanese garrison on the island surrendered to a detachment of United States Marines on the 4th of September, 1945. Section 1. Prelude. In January 1941, the United States Navy constructed a military base on the atoll. On the 19th of August, the first permanent military garrison, under strength elements of the 1st Marine Defense Battalion, totaling 450 officers and men, were stationed on the island, under Major James P. S. Devereux. The Defense Battalion was supplemented by Marine Corps Fighter Squadron VMF-211, consisting of 12 F-4F-3 Wildcat fighters, commanded by Major Paul A. Putnam. Also present on the island were 68 U.S. Navy personnel, and about 1,221 civilian workers for the Morris and Knudsen Civil Engineering Company. 45 Chamorro men were employed by the Pan, Am Pan American Airways at the company's facilities in Wake Island, one of the stops on the Pan Am Clipper Trans-Pacific Air Service initiated in 1935. The Marines were armed with six 5-inch 130mm 51 cal pieces, originating from the battleship USS Texas. 12 3 inch 76 mm 50 cal anti aircraft guns, with only a single working anti aircraft director among them. 18 50 inch 12.7 mm Browning heavy machine guns, and 30 30 inch 7.62 mm heavy, medium, and light water and air cooled machine guns. On the 28th of November, Commander Winfield S. Cunningham reported to Wake to assume overall command of the U.S. forces on the island. He had only ten days to examine the defences and assess his men before war broke out. On the 8th of December, just hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Wake being on the opposite side of the international dateline, 36 Japanese Mitsubishi G3M medium bombers flown from bases on the Marshall Islands attacked Wake Island, destroying eight of the 12 F4F3 Wildcats on the ground. The remaining four Wildcats were in the air patrolling, but because of poor visibility, failed to see the attacking Japanese bombers. These Wildcats did down two bombers on the following day, however. All of the Marine garrison's defensive, defensive emplacements were left intact by the raid, which primarily targeted the naval aircraft. Of the 55 Marine aviation personnel, 23 were killed and 11 were wounded. Following this attack, the Pan Am employees were evacuated, along with the passengers of a clipper flying boat that had survived the attack unscathed. The Chamorro men were not allowed to board the plane and were left behind. Two more air raids followed. The main camp was targeted on the 9th of December, resulting in destruction of the civilian hospital and the Pan Am facility. The next day, bombers focused on Wilkes Island. Following the raid on the 9th of December, the guns had been relocated in case the Japanese had photographed the positions. Wooden replicas were erected in their place, and the Japanese bombers attacked the decoy positions. A lucky strike on a civilian dynamite supply set off a chain reaction and destroyed the munitions for the guns on Wilkes. Section 2. First Landing Attempt Early on the morning of the 11th of December, the garrison, with the support of the four remaining Wildcats, repelled the first Japanese landing attempt by the South Seas Force which included the light cruisers Yubari, Tenryu, and Tatsuda, the destroyers Yayoi, Mutsuki, Kisaragi, Hayate, Oite, and Asanagi, two Momi-class destroyers converted to patrol boats, patrol boat number 32 and patrol boat number 33, and two troop transport ships containing 450 special naval landing force troops. The U.S. Marines fired at the invasion fleet with their six 5-inch 127mm coast defense guns. Major Devereux, the, the Marine camp commander under Cunningham, 
ordered the gunners to hold their fire until the enemy moved within range of the coastal defenses. Battery L, on Peel Island, succeeded in sinking Hayate at a distance of 4,000 yards, 3,700 meters, with at least two direct hits to her magazines, causing her to explode and sink within two minutes, in full view of the defenders on shore. Yubari's superstructure was hit 11 times. The four Wildcats also succeeded in sinking the destroyer Kisaragi by dropping a bomb on her stern where the depth charges were stored. Both Japanese destroyers were lost with all hands, with Hayate becoming the first Japanese surface warship to be sunk in the war. The Japanese force withdrew without landing. This was the first Japanese setback of the war against the Americans. After the initial raid was fought off, American news media reported that, when queried about reinforcement and resupply, Commander Cunningham was reported to have quipped, send us more Japs. In fact, Cunningham sent a long list of critical equipment, including gun sights, spare parts, and fire control radar, to his immediate superior, Commandant, 14th Naval District. It is believed that the quip was actually padding, a technique of adding nonsense text to a message to make cryptanalysis more difficult. But the continuing siege and frequent Japanese air attacks on the wake garrison continued without resupply for the Americans. The initial resistance offered by the garrison prompted the Japanese Navy to detach the aircraft carriers Soryu and Heryu from the force that had attacked Pearl Harbor to support the second landing attempt. Section 2.1 Aborted USN Relief Attempt The projected US relief attempt by Admiral Frank Fletcher's Task Force 11 TF-11, and supported by Admiral Wilson Brown's TF-14, consisted of the fleet carrier Saratoga, the fleet oil oiler Neches, the seaplane tender Tangier, the heavy cruisers Astoria, Minneapolis, and San Francisco, and ten destroyers. The convoy carried the 4th Marine Defense Battalion and fighter squadron VMF-221, equipped with Brewster F-2A-3 Buffalo fighters, along with 9,000 5-inch rounds, 12,000 3-inch 76mm rounds, and 3 million 50-inch 12.7mm rounds, as well as a large amount of ammunition for mortars and other battalion small arms. TF-14, with the fleet carrier Lexington, three heavy cruisers, eight destroyers, and an oiler, was to undertake a raid on the Marshall Islands to divert Japanese attention. At 9 p.m. on the 22nd of December, after receiving information indicating the presence of two Imperial Japanese Navy carriers and two fast battleships, which were actually heavy cruisers, near Wake Island, Vice Admiral William S. Pai, the acting commander-in-chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, ordered TF-11 to return to Pearl Harbor. Section 3. Second Assault the second Japanese invasion force came on the 23rd of December, composed mostly of the same ships from the first attempt, with the major reinforcements of the carriers Hiryu and Suryu, plus 1,500 Japanese marines. The landings began at 2.35 a.m., where after a preliminary bombardment, the ex-destroyers, patrol boat number 32 and patrol boat number 33, were beached and burned in their attempts to land the invasion force. After a full night and morning of fighting, the Wake garrison surrendered to the Japanese by mid-afternoon. The U.S. Marines lost, 40, lost 49 killed and two MIA during the entire 15-day siege, while three U.S. Navy personnel and at least 70 U.S. civilians were killed, including 10 Chamorros and 12 civilians wounded. Japanese losses were recorded at around 820 killed, with around 333 more wounded in addition to the two destroyers lost in the first invasion attempt, and at least 28 land-based and carrier aircraft either shot down or damaged. The Japanese captured all men remaining on the island, the majority of whom were civilian contractors employed by the Morrison Nuts and Company. Captain Henry T. Elrod, one of the pilots from VMF-211, was awarded the Medal of Honor posthumous, posthumously for his action on the island during the second landing attempt having shot down two Japanese a 6 m 2 and sunk the Japanese destroyer Kirasagi. A special military decoration, the Wake Island device, affixed to either the, Naval, the Navy Expeditionary Medal or the Marine Corps Expeditionary Medal, 
was created to honor those who had fought in the defense of the island. Section 4. Japanese Occupation Fearing an imminent invasion, the Japanese reinforced Wake Island with more formidable defenses. The American captives were ordered to build a series of bunkers and fortifications on Wake. The Japanese brought in an 8-inch, 200mm naval gun, which is often incorrectly reported as having been captured in Singapore. The U.S. Navy established a submarine blockade instead of an, uh, instead of an amphibious invasion of Wake Island. As a result, the Japanese garrison starved, which led to their hunt hunting the Wake Island ra ra Rail, an endemic bird, to extinction. On the 24th of February 1942, aircraft from the carrier Enterprise attacked the Japanese garrison on Wake Island. U.S. forces bombed the island periodically from 1942 until Japan's surrender in 1945. On the 24th of July 1943, Consolidated B-24 Liberators, led by Lieutenant Jesse Stay of the 42nd Squadron, 11th Bombardment Group of the U.S. Army Air Forces, in transit from Midway Island, struck the Japanese garrison on Wake Island. At least two men from that raid were awarded distinguished flying crosses for their efforts. Future President George H.W. Bush also flew his first combat mission as a naval aviator over Wake Island. After this, Wake was occasionally raided, but never attacked en masse. Section 4.1 War Crimes On the 5th of October, 1943, American naval aircraft from Yorktown raided Wake. Two days later, fearing an imminent invasion, Japanese Rear Admiral Shigematsu Sakaibara ordered the execution of the 98 captive American civilian workers who had initially been kept to to perform forced labor. They were taken to the northern end of the island, blindfolded and executed with a machine gun. One of the prisoners, whose name has never been discovered, escaped, apparently, returning to the site to carve the message 98 U.S. P.W. 5-10-43 on a large coral rock near where the victims had been hastily buried in a mass grave. The unknown American was recaptured and Sakaibara personally beheaded him with a katana. The inscription on the rock can still be seen and is a Wake Island landmark. On the 4th of September, 1945, the remaining Japanese garrison surrendered to a detachment of U.S. Marines. The handover of Wake was officially conducted in a brief ceremony aboard the destroyer escort Levy. After the war, Sakaibara and his subordinate, Lieutenant Commander Tachibana, were sentenced to death for the massacre of the 98 and for other war crimes. Several Japanese officers in American custody had committed suicide over the incident, leaving written statements that incriminated Sakaibara. Admiral Sakaibara was hanged on the 18th of June, 1947. Eventually, Tachibana's sentence was commuted to life in prison. The murdered civilian POWs were reburied after the war in Honolulu's National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, Cemetery of the Pacific, commonly known as Punchbowl Crater. Section five, escape. William L. Taylor, like many of the Wake Island POWs, was relocated to China for forced labor for the Japanese army. In 1945, he was traveling on a Japanese train as part of a work detail from Shanghai when he escaped with Jack Hernandez by jumping off the train when Japanese guards were not looking. Hernandez broke his leg and was forced to remain behind as Taylor continued his journey. Down the line, Taylor met up with Chinese communist soldiers, who he quoted as saying, You're okay now. We are friends with the Americans. After ten weeks of traveling with the Chinese communists in northern China, he was able to contact American military forces who called for a plane to pick him up and take him to an American base in northern China. Before he left China, he met Mao Zedong, who gave him a gift of Chinese rugs and told him he was the only POW who had successfully come through North China. In an interview with the History Channel during the episode Wake Island, the Alamo of the Pacific, he claims that Mao saved his life. Section 6 portrayal in popular culture. Paramount Pictures began work on a movie even before the battle was over. 
released on the 24th of August 1942, Wake Island tacked on tacked on unrelated romantic subplots onto a straightforward retelling of the battle. The film contains numerous factual errors, leaving viewers with the impression that the island's defenders fought to the last man, that the island's naval commander was killed in a bombing raid, he survived, that cruisers, rather than small destroyers, were sunk, and that the island's defense was in the hands of USMC officers. However, the film succeeded in its primary propaganda purpose of creating a stirring patriotic film. It was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture. John Farrow won the 1942 New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Director. In the 1943 Warner Brothers film Air Force, an Army Air Force B-17 bomber lands on wake for refueling during a flight from Hawaii to the Philippines, shortly after the war begins. The Marines ask the crew of the bomber to take their mascot, a dog named Tripoli, with them. Although US B-17s were ferried from the United States to the Philippines in the fall of, of 1941 via a route that included a refueling stop at Wake, no aircraft made this trip once the war had started. The 1943 cartoon, The Yankee Doodle Mouse, has Lieutenant Jerry Mouse sending a message reading, Send More Cats, a parody of the popular report that the embattled Marines at Wake Island sent a telegram reading, Send More Japs. In fact, this was an example of words that had been padded to the original message to confuse enemy codebreakers. A 2003 television documentary, Wake Island, Alamo of the Pacific, included interviews with both U.S. Marines and Japanese sailors who took part in the fighting. The film received a 2004 Emmy nomination for music and sound. A fair copy of the island has been featured as a map as Wake Island in the Battlefield video games, beginning with the series' first entry released in 2002, Battlefield 1942, and Battlefield 1943. In the 1994 film Pulp Fiction, Christopher Walken's character, Captain Coons, references the battle when recounting the somewhat painful journey of the young Butch Coolidge's father's wrist watch. His monologue also makes references to the 1943 movie Air Force, the third episode of the 2015 anime Kantai Collection takes place around a fictional W Island, which is based on Wake Island and also features the sinking of the destroyer Kisaragi. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attributions Share Alike 3.0 unported license. Available at www.creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy dash sa slash 3.0